Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of Aneka guys. So basically, Aneka is a software platform where you can develop some distributed applications guys. Okay, so you can develop them and you can test them also. Okay, yes. So that is a platform where you can build them. Okay, okay. So don't worry guys, we'll be discussing about the architecture and the introduction about this, this Aneka. I never used Aneka, but I'll be giving you some overview of it. Okay, yes. So it provides a developers with a rich APIs. Guys. So basically what is API guys, which is nothing but application or program interface, right? Yes. Okay, so I think everyone knows the use of APIs, right? So if you want to get some information from somewhere, so it might be from Instagram, from YouTube or from Facebook. If you want to get the number of likes for a particular video, instead of opening that website or that link, you can get the data using APIs guys. So basically YouTube is also having some standard APIs using which you can take the data. Okay, yes. So in this way, the APS will work guys. So basically it creates the interface between the application and the program. Got it? Yes. So these kind of APIs are many available in Aneka guys. So that is the reason why it is a popular developing developing tool. Okay. Yes. So it is a market oriented cloud development and management platform. It supports multi programming and application development. So you can do application development also. Okay. So it internally has a SDK. So same like Android studio. So in Android studio also we will be having SDKs, we will be downloading them, right? So inside them only you will be having your APIs as well as the tools. So basically here also inside this SDKs only we will be having the APIs and tools. So using these tools you can develop your application, okay? Yes. So the architecture will look in this way guys. Okay. So in my book I wrote that I will add image but I ended up forgetting it guys. So that's the reason why I am showing it again here and I did not take the print out of it because it's not there in the PDF. Okay. Yes. So anyway, let us, I'll be adding it in, I'll be sharing it in our group and I'll be updating the PDF also guys. Don't worry. Okay. Yes. So let us concentrate for two minutes. I'll be explaining you the whole architectural diagram you can say guys. Okay. Yes. So indirectly it is having the three layers you can say guys, three main layers. Okay. So the first layer is nothing but your application development and management kits. So basically here you will be having multiple APIs and management kit. Okay. And in between you will be having your middleware. Okay. And in, in, uh, at the bottom you will be having your infrastructure. So these are the three layers you can say infrastructure, middleware and application development. So in application development, we are having two modules. So the first module is software development kit. So in software development kit, you will have the APIs guys. So what are APIs we are having and some tutorials on them. So basically how to use those APIs, you will have some tutorials and on these tutorials and APIs, you will have some sample codes to work with directly to start working with. So these are the three components in your software development kit. Okay, when it comes to management kit, so in management kit, so basically if you want to use all these things and if you want to build an application, the management is really important, right? Yes. So that is the reason why we are having web services, admin portal and management studio. So basically those are the three components. Okay. So when it comes to middleware, okay. So in middleware, we are having the three internal layers, you can say guys. So the first one is execution services and the second is foundational services and the last is nothing but fabric services. Okay. Yes. So the execution services is nothing but so what programming models do you want to use to run the programs? So basically we'll be discussing about this thread, task and map reduce models guys. Don't worry. Okay. Yes. So by using those programming models, you can write a code and you can execute it guys. Got it? Yes. So what are foundational services? So any kind of application will have some rules and regulations, right? Yes. So those licensing part, membership part, accounting part, reservation, storage, everything will be stored by this foundation services guys. Got it? Yes. Similarly, fabricated services are nothing but so here I told you, right? So the infrastructure will be below. So someone should be managing these things, right? Like what item to select, resource pooling, resource provisions and all those things should be taken care, right? So that services comes under this fabric services. Got it? Yes. So again, you will be taking care with the security here and the press uh, persistence. Okay. Yes. Okay. So platform abstract layer is will be there. Okay. Yes. So that is the one which connects both of them, the above and below. Okay. So in infrastructure, you will be having your desktops, data centers, clusters and computers. So it could be any one of them. Okay. Yes. So uh, you got some basic idea, right? I think everyone can write in your own words, right? Yes. Okay. So I hope everyone got a clear idea. So now let us go through the programming. I told you, right? So we are having three different types of programming. So the first one is a task programming model. Okay. So first let us go through the theory. Then I'll be explaining you in terms of my own words. Okay. Yes. Task programming model provides developers with the ability of expressing application as a collection of independent tasks. Each task can perform a different or same operation on different data and can be executed in runtime environment. So basically the 
task programming model is nothing but so here the whole things which you want to complete or which you want to perform you will be making them into some tasks guys so these are tasks could perform the same operation or different operation it might be anything okay so it might be same operation or different operation okay yes so at that moment if it is the same or different operation you will be getting outputs right so it is a runtime model guys you can say that is the reason why it is called as a task programming model okay similarly if you divide them into threads that comes under the thread programming model if you divide the whole concept into multiple threads so like small small single single thread I, I hope everyone knows a thread right so a lightweight process is nothing but a thread guys okay yes so if you divide them into threads and if you want you can even run multi-threading also guys you can run multiple threads at a moment of time so all those things are also possible similarly map reduce so map reduce i hope everyone knows we already discussed in second unit i think so about this map reduce in detail okay yes so mapping is a one uh, step and reduce is other step so using these two steps you can work on any kind of large data set also so that is the major advantage with this map reduce programming model okay yes so the last thing is nothing but your hardware requirement so the application the whole aneka, aneka application will take around 100 mb of space and a minimum of 1 gb and above ram is also enough case so it is that much efficient application okay and it can run on any windows uh, windows operating system so basically it was developed by Majesta, I, I, yeah, Maj Majorasoft, okay, so Majorasoft is the company which started this, guys, okay, so which is the founder of this application, okay, so it can run on any Windows system, I'm not sure about Mac and uh, Linux, guys, okay, so you can just confirm that, and it uses the SQL recommended, so whatever is recommended, like uh, Oracle SQL or anything, based on your requirements, it can use anyone, okay, yes, so this is all about Aneka, guys, so I hope everyone got some basic idea about it, right, yes, so we are now done with the fourth unit also guys. So in the next lecture, let us go to the review of fourth unit and then we will be moving on to the fifth unit. Okay. Yes. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.